Today on This Week in Startups, Mo Koifman is here from Spark Capital, and we'll take some startup questions in the Ask Jason segment, and Mo's going to explain to us how they made 50x on the Twitter investment in 18 months. All that and more right now on This Week in Startups. It's what it's all about, man. They said, money is the root of all evil, but funny how it feeds my people, we ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you, yeah, money is the root of all evil, but funny how it feeds my people, yeah, we ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Everybody, hello everybody. It's episode 110 of this week in startups. We are a month out from the launch conference taking place on February 23rd and 24th. Man, is it cooking? We've got incredible partners, as you know. Uh, Sequoia Capital and Google came in to uh, help us throw the event, Tyler. Uh, I've heard of them. You might have heard of them. They've yeah. got a little business, uh, and they're a little bit, a little bit active. And uh, tickets selling like crazy because we ran the price down to a very affordable $400 for startups and $1,000 for everybody else, including VCs who are normally paying. Thousands and thousands of dollars mm-hmm. to go to conferences. That's nothing. VCs love, love, love to spend five, six, seven thousand dollars a conference. I'm telling them one. Not this thousand. VC. Not this VC. <laughs> uh, this VC is cheap. His name is Mo Koifman, and uh, we are on the board of GGGT together. Exactly. Uh, Gadget.com. Uh, that's how we met each other, uh, or we spend time together. But we spend every six weeks. We Sometimes get you in your bathroom. Sometimes I'm in my times bathroom. Sometimes fully clothed. Sometimes fully clothed. Uh, you, of course, refer to the. We we had our last. <laughs> Call virtually, basically, and <laughs> we use Skype exactly. images and uh, the, the baby new was multi-way video. Multi-way video, and it actually almost worked. worked. Well, yeah. uh, and uh, the baby had been sick all night, and my wife was like, "Take care of the baby," and I was like, "Well, I got, t- I got a board meeting." And then yeah. I realized, you know what? You're no, th- I'm just dad at home. It's, no, it's over. You know, you're, you're not like CEO or board member. You're dad. Uh, well, so I basically the, showed up. At the very best, you're second in command. So, <laughs> third try. Wait till your I kids come grow after, up. I come, I come after <laughs> the dogs. And basically, I was. I go to the board meeting. I think it's going to be phone. And of course, Peter and Ryan put me on video. <laughs> I'm in my bathrobe, and my hair is going like this. <laughs> And uh, I was like, all right, F it. So then I just stood up and I went to open my robe. And he took out like 10 guys going like this. Oh, no. <laughs> For a second, I thought Hef was joining the board. Meeting. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and uh, well, anyway, all good <laughs> stuff. Um, special thanks to our friends at GoToMeeting. Uh, Citrix uh, has been doing a great job with GoToMeeting. Meetings are hard. Uh, starting them is hard. And your reputation is on the line when you, you, know, when you do one of these things, Tyler. And we had been running all of the meetings for this uh, for the launch conference on GoToMeeting, and it's flawless. And when people uh, send me that GoToMeeting link, I click it, I'm in, it's done. Uh, no problem. Join uh, meetings in seconds. No technical headaches, and that's really the key. Hold as many meetings as you want for one low rate. Uh, so if you're a business guy or gal, startup person, you've got to show people your product. It's so much easier to just get them to do a 10-minute you know, go to meeting than to get the actual meeting in person. Uh, sign up at GoToMeeting right now and you'll get a free 30-day trial if you use the promo code START. Start using GoToMeeting and thank you to GoToMeeting for uh, their support of the program. Independent media like this would not exist without the gracious support of awesome companies. And you know, we only accept advertisers that we actually use the product. That's it. If we, if we will not address product, I won't let them advertise because I don't, I don't need the money or anything like that. It's, if they're good and they want to support it, we'll let them buy the cameras, pay for the donuts, whatever. Uh, and this is one of those companies where I use GoToMeeting, so it's very easy for me to endorse them and tell you to use them as well, because I know that you'll have a good experience. Uh, Mo, you are a uh, former corporate suit, <laughs> right? You were well, a suit at IAC? I was an entrepreneur in a suit's clothing. Yes, so entrepreneur inside of uh, interactive corporation, IAC, Barry mm-hmm. Dillis Company. Uh, you were there for the purchase of College Humor, Vimeo, yep. Busted Tees. Was Busted Tees made? It was in- all part of uh, a company called Connected Ventures. And yes. I led the acquisition acquisition of that company and the, the entrepreneurs that, that founded that business were pretty savvy. Actually, Busted Tees was started um, during the, the kind of dip in the ad market post mm. the first bubble. Uh, you know, the, they weren't able to generate enough. They they'd bootstrapped the company. They never raised right. any money, and they couldn't generate the same ad revenue, of course, uh, that they could from you know from the networks as well as any direct selling that they were starting to do. So they needed a way to plug the gap, and they thought, well, why don't we sell T-shirts to our audience? Genius. They, you know, by the time we bought it, the thing was doing. I don't know, four or five million a year top line just on the t-shirt business. It's amazing. Yeah, four or five great. million dollars in t-shirts. Yeah. And 
those t-shirts probably have like an 80% margin. It's like $5 well, for a t-shirt. The product margin's probably a little less than that, somewhere between 50 and 60%. But, right. you know, it's a retail business, but to do, we probably did, you know, just shy 20% margins, and that's yeah. pretty good for a retail business. Amazing. And College Humor became a juggernaut, and uh, you ran some other businesses well, inside. Well, College Humor and, and Vimeo as well. Vimeo. And Vimeo has really um, taken off tremendously. I mean, we, yeah. when we bought the company, uh, Vimeo was initially a, a side project that Zach Klein yeah. and Jacob Lodwick started. Yeah. Uh, you know, the College Humor guys or the Connected Ventures guys were just you know, pretty. There are four of them: Ricky, uh, Josh, Jake, and Zach. I had I had lunch with Josh when those guys yeah, were coming up. Great. Before they did, I and they, they were just asking me for some advice or whatever. And yeah, very very close friend to I this like, day. These guys are scary smart. Yeah, they're they're and they're just natural entrepreneurs. So you know, they bootstrap the whole thing. They would work on the stuff they wanted to work on. Yeah. And, and J Jake and Zach had a problem because they wanted to share video with each other, with their friends, with other folks. Right. And they literally spun up the site. Uh, you know, Zach on the design and right. UX side, and Jacob more on the technical side yeah. and, and some of the vision there and um, they spun it up and when we bought the company it was like I mean it was tiny it was like we bought Connected Ventures with Vimeo was like a plus at the yeah. end of the deal like when I went into to Barry to, yeah. to kind of say we need to do this thing it was like and there's Vimeo right um, you get your own YouTube exactly we'll throw in a better and, uh, YouTube you know at that point I don't even think it was 100,000 users and now I think they're doing you know close to 40 million uniques a month so Vimeo does 40 million yeah I think and it's, people uh, pay for that service right Tyler there's it's not a, Free, right? No, there's a pretty sizable pro business, you know. Pro business, yeah. Uh, I think that you know, this year they'll do double-digit million revenue. I, I, wow. I, I'm not sure I can. I don't, I'm not sure I should know the exact number, but right. uh, um, you may have had it whispered to you. They're doing they're doing yeah. pretty well, and uh, you know, I, I'm, they're they're the number two independent. Well, I guess they're not independent, but they're number two video site behind YouTube, and I think they're they're positioned very very differently in the market just in terms yeah, of the brand. Yeah, it seems like it's all high quality stuff. They've positioned very early on about quality. HD. You know, yeah, HD. They were the first. We were we were the first. I was there when we did it. We were the first to launch um, HD. Uh, I remember video on with the those web. digital SLR cameras. Yep. How amazing it looked! It was mind blowing. I said, "How do they give this away it's for great. free?" And that one of the things that they they did, and it's actually, you know, really important to think about when you invest in consumer web and specifically social services is, mm -hmm. you know, the guys early on really spent a lot of time making sure that um, the community was positive and supportive. Hmm. And I think, you know, there, there was a real reaction to YouTube as a platform where, you know, you put a video up and you get all these haters coming out in the God, comments. God, the comments are just brutal. I mean, if you go sit, it's, it's, it's worse than TechCrunch. Yeah, and that's a big statement. <laughs> I, I know you'd appreciate that. I one. appreciate the statement. <laughs> I'm Jason Calacan, and I endorse this myth. No, but I mean, so, the comment threads. I mean, even Business threads, Insider has exactly. like brutal it gets pretty threads. brutal. Yeah. And if you look at the the comment threads on Vimeo, you know, we did a really, uh, you know, the guys started, and we we really um, made it our business to hone that community and curate yeah. it very carefully and make sure that it was a a place that people people felt comfortable, right. you know, engaging in. And I think. That makes a big, big difference for social services, especially early the early days of that yeah. service, and how that community develops over time. Do, you might grow a little slower in the beginning. Correct. But when you do have your hockey stick, when you do have your Twitter moment, uh, maybe you maintain some integrity in the product. A hundred percent. I just actually wrote about this this morning, but it's you know, when you think about an early community on the web. Um, quality is as important as quantity. Right. And so, yes, you want to grow as quickly as possible, but um, there's growth for the sake of growth, and there's growth that's very organic and very germane to the to the core of what you're trying to do. Right. And I think it's important to be cognizant of that and to foster the right kind of Most community. Most people don't think that way, though. A lot of VCs you think would be like, ah, you know, we got to see these numbers go up. we got to see you got to go up in Quantcast. I mean, that is true, correct? I mean, By the way, I'm not sitting here and saying that you don't have to see the numbers go up. I'm, right. I'm a VC that will say, Say you have to see the numbers go up, but right. I, I am, you know, conscious of the kind of community you try and build, and mm -hmm. and a lot of that comes through through product, frankly, yeah. you know, and the the way you construct the product, the way you hone it, the kind of interactions that you foster on the site. Mm. So the personality of the UX, if you 100%. will, percent. The character of it 100%. can drive the uh, and YouTube. I hundred percent. YouTube feels like very mechanical. You know, it's, it feels like a utility. 100%. And, and if you look at Vimeo, I mean, you just go to Vimeo.com today and you see, even on the logged out homepage, you see the backdrop, which, you know, we did a redesign when I was when I was overseeing the business. Um, and it's friendly and there's birds and yeah. the sky. Beautiful. And, you know, it just, it, it, it feels very different. Yeah, um, if you walk into like a beautiful house or a church, you just don't feel like you're going to, 
start acting like a frat boy or something, right? 100%. You're, I yeah. mean, it's all part of, you know, product is brand and brand is product and it, it it, it has, you know, there's a certain magic that goes into these social services that's a, a combination of, you know, the right people at the right time with the right product and the right yeah. feel and the right sensibility. Right founders. And the, yeah, yeah. Well, people, Designers, you know, right, exactly. Yeah. And, and um, you know, I think I think those guys had it and, you know, we within IAC and we, we took it from a, from a very small, I remember when we were like, you know, we should really put some fuel behind this fire and like went up to Barry and I put this deck together and I was like, you know, we need a few million bucks because right. <laughs> we need to build this thing. Like, this right. is a gem, a diamond in the rough here, right. and we really want to put. You know, we, there was nobody working on it. It was right. just like Jack, you know, Jake yeah. and Zach in their spare time. So right. we ended up hiring like a team of twelve really, really talented folks. And um, it's huge. It's at the top two hundred sites. Oh, I guess, it's top one hundred, I think. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, twenty million. Really so great job. then you decide you're going to leave the comforts of yeah. being a senior vice president or EVP or whatever the heck you are. Yeah, COO or COO, COO or whatever. You were. Oh, right, COO. Um, and so big cush salary. I guess Barry gives you 15 hours a year on his plane. Uh, you can find anywhere you want in the world. I heard that's what you get. I'm it's not, a, not anywhere you want. Not anywhere you want? Yes. <laughs> it has to be where he's going. Well, it has to be. Your, your trip has to line up with his trip. Perfectly. So you can bum a seat on the uh, G5 or whatever it is, and, and then you decide you want to be a VC. Yeah. Uh, why? Well, I didn't actually decide I wanted to be a VC. Yeah. How, how did that happen? Yeah. Um, so at IC, I, I kind of had a, two different careers. I started off doing you know, strategy and m and um, and actually, you know, Jason Rapp, who works with yeah. you right now, took over the group after myself and another couple, I mean, there were three of us at the time, we sort of all moved out into different roles and they hired Jason to, to take over when we... Currently the president of Mahalo. Exactly. Awesome and, guy. And, um, um, you know, so the first part of my career at IEC was more about uh, doing, you know, corporate strategy and deals, acquisitions, some smaller investments that we made mm -hmm. um, and some larger acquisitions, you know, from 500 million billion dollars, like pretty pretty sizable deals. We were, you know, this was 02 to 04. Good time to be shopping. Yeah, we basically had, you know, the they had just structured the deal with Vivendi to sell the media assets. We had a pretty flush balance sheet. Market was depressed, mm. and we were one of the only buyers out there. And we had I mean, a we lot had, of cash too. We had a Billions lot of cash, of four and a half billion dollars. We had a lot of conviction in the in the internet and specifically commerce on the on the web at that point, um, and ultimately media. And we um, we we bought into that pretty heavily. So that was super exciting, and mm. that gave me you know I'd come from a transactional background, and that was just you know on the ground doing deals like ex some of the stuff that I do today. Uh, admittedly, you know some of those deals were far more complex because when you're doing a five hundred forty million dollar acquisition, it's a little different than doing a five hundred forty thousand dollar seed investment, but, right. um, you know, it, it's still uh, a lot of transactional experience there. And then I, I had the opportunity to, um, you know, IAC was a pretty entrepreneurial place, and uh, I had the opportunity to, to, when the market got a little overheated, Barry wanted to start some stuff. And, right. Uh, Myself and a couple other guys broke off, and we launched a couple businesses. I, I went back into a senior M&A role for a while, and then kind of I, I wanted to just do more startup stuff within IAC, so just kept doing that, and ended up involved in sort of launching uh, like four or five different businesses while I was there, and ultimately buying Connected Ventures and running those businesses for a little while. Um, and so when I left, I, I basically had been there long enough, and I knew I didn't want to be at a big company. That's yeah. all I knew, but I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to do, so I just said, you know, I'm never going to figure it out while I'm in here. I just need to clear my head, get yeah. out of here, get some space and figure out what I want to do. So yeah. I, I left, took a little time, traveled a bit uh, and really started can, I'd met so many people over the years working there. It was such a sure. great platform to meet people. Yeah, I mean, that's what the big company is good for. You learn, yeah. see what the process is. Well, especially a big company where you're on the acquisition side, you have a ton of cash and nobody else is buying anything. I yeah, you see everything. everything. Yeah. I, see, I saw everything. You know, I met everybody in the industry. Right. And it was super fun. So I, I basically, um, I left and I was, I was looking at a, you know, running potentially a bunch of earlier stage business because at that point right. I had really I'd moved from the later stage stuff really to early stage stuff. I was, right. just, I was super passionate and about more, it. And more why? Why were you so, so passionate just, about the startup stuff? You can see I more like impact. Entrepreneurship. I enjoy building things. I love working with inventors and, yeah. and dreamers. And the and later stage stuff is what? It's too it's much. It's a little about more scale. financial engineering. Yeah. And you know, it was it was more uh, it was more. Um, Operational. Um, I enjoyed it too, but there was something about, you know, the 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 earlier stage magic mm. that just spoke to me. Um, 
Um, and so, you know, I was just drawn to it. And so over, over my career there, I just kept doing more and more stuff. And luckily we had this environment where we could build stuff and launch stuff and yeah. buy small stuff and grow it. And so that's basically what I did. And, and when I left, I, I thought maybe I'd continue doing that. I didn't know if, you know, at IC, I did both the investing thing and I did the operating thing. And I didn't know which one I was going to do. And I just started meeting with everybody I possibly could. Did Spark could. exist at that point or did they? It's a yeah, relatively Spark, new firm. Yeah. So what basically happened is I left. Um, Spark was, Spark, um, was uh, founded in 05. I left at the beginning of 08. Um, I just started meeting with all the people I knew, all the smart people I knew, people doing interesting things, and I had met the Spark guys right when they started the fund. A, a, f a friend of mine was close friends with one of the founders from business school. Mm. Um, and he introduced me to Spark early on, and I, I had developed a relationship with them. I'd bring some of their companies into IAC. I'd help you know, them with partnerships and thinking through some stuff and doing some diligence. And you know, I had relationships with a handful of VCs, and they were one of them. And when I reached, uh, reached out to the guys saying, hey, I'm leaving IAC, they're like, well, that's great. We should talk. Um, you know, I was originally yeah. thinking maybe I'd step in and help run one of the portfolio companies. Yeah, and they yeah. were like, well, we're actually thinking we'd love to have somebody in New York. And this is like, wow. 08, super early, and yep. they would have already made a handful of investments in New York. I mean, probably were pushing 10 investments in New York at that wow. point. They're uh, Boston-based. Boston-based firm. So what is, the, uh, what, what is the philosophy of Spark? I mean, is there, is there you know, every firm's got some sort of way yeah. they approach their, their, their discipline. What, what is well, Spark's? You know, you I, think we're, um, I think we're fairly focused. So we, we really sit at this intersection of media, technology, and, and really the internet and, and everything, you know, the, the services layer on top, mm -hmm. the application layer on, on top, all the way back to the infrastructure that supports, you know, the, this everything that we're seeing right now yeah. in terms of the explosion of, 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 of movement to the, to the web. Um, it is pretty heavily consumer. It's heavily consumer. Why we is have, that? Is it just you guys enjoy it? Well, it's heavily consumer, but we do some infrastructure stuff as well. And a couple of the, the founding partners have long-standing careers in the infrastructure side, having led investments in Akamai and ah, you know, okay. companies that... And those things are not disparate because, I mean, no, Akamai not. is something that the consumer products are going to use. We basically start with the consumer yeah. in the kind of media internet services Community. value chain yeah. and work our way back from there in terms of the enablers. And there are a couple guys at the firm that focus on the on the on the infrastructure stuff and then, you know, myself, um, Bijan, my partner sure. you know, and and Andrew now and and Alex, a couple of other other of us spend more time uh, mm -hmm. on the consumer side. So of if things. you're looking at an investment like Twitter, Tumblr or GDGT, you can say, "Oh, what services do they need to make those products possible?" Let's work backwards and and find those companies. So yeah, and and, and you know it's it's good because we have we have a good firm dynamic. We have people that like to focus more on the infrastructure side yeah. and people that focus more on the consumer side. But we, we have a pretty strong consumer bent, and we spend a lot of time. Everybody spends a lot of time in the in the services and application layer. And I think so. That's kind of one thing that makes us unique because I think we we understand this landscape through and through. And I think everybody in the room, you know, you go to some VC firms and they have the clean tech practice and the healthcare practice, and that's great, and diversification and all that. But, you know, with Spark, you come into the room for a partner meeting or partner presentation and everybody understands your business and what you're talking about. Right. And it's, everybody can everybody's age. Pretty, uh, we all speak the same language. Yeah. We're all, you know, we all understand it from the, from the front, from the top and from the bottom. And I think that that's pretty unique. And they you know, the gang there in terms of setting up shop was pretty early to that. I think we're also, you know, we're, we're very entrepreneur focused and entrepreneur friendly. I mean, we really do try to, and we believe very strongly in, in backing talented entrepreneurs yeah. to build great businesses. And that's, that's a, a big mantra of ours. Um, you know, we, we really, look for, especially on the consumer side, we look for um, uh, businesses that have uh, passionate, engaged users where you really can see the network forming and the data yeah. asset at the center um, that are very disruptive. We love to create new markets as mm -hmm. much as we you know, like to innovate in existing ones. So let's go through some of the lists. Five men, uh, business you guys invested in and sold $65 million to AOL. Yes. Uh, that did fantastic. Yep. Um, how did that? How did that business go? Were you involved in that one? Um, uh, I was somewhat involved. With the, the, the investment was led by by uh, Alex Finkelstein. Um, uh, the you know I was somewhat involved because actually we had looked at that deal when I was at IAC ah. and we lost the deal to Spark. Ah, <laughs> interesting. Which is kind of an interesting twist of fate. Yeah. Um, and it was the right thing for them at the time. Seems like a big part of AOL strategy. Yeah, it, it is, and I think uh, not just strategy, but I think it's a big part of their management team right now. Because oh wow. Those guys are fantastic. I think Ron and crew are, are going to be overseeing a good amount of their video efforts. So uh, Tumblr? 
Yep. You got in early for that one? Early, seeded that company. Seeded it, wow. Uh, yeah, you seeded involved, it. So, wow, really uh, from, early. From very early days, and, you know, us and, and our partners at Union Square did three rounds before Sequoia just came in with yeah, the Yeah, Fred Wilson round. and those guys. Yeah, Fred and... and uh, great, on, great, great VC. Exactly, and... Um, um, and now so, that business is in the top 50 sites. Yeah, the, it's growing like crazy. Incredible it's like, number you know, of page views. It's funny. I also knew the Tumblr business and story and guys pretty well because they were parallel, paralleling Vimeo. Yeah. And the actually, you know, Jake was an angel investor in Tumblr, and we did yeah. the first integration between Tumblr and Vimeo, and uh. Vimeo was powering the video on Tumblr. Yeah. And so even when I wasn't at Spark, you know, we had... Been, I, I'd been involved with and engaged with and watching and playing and participating in Tumblr for a very long time. Yeah. And uh, the Vimeo team was like, su everybody was on what's Tumblr. The, what's Super the magic active. of Tumblr? Is, is it that it's so simple compared to WordPress or other Actually, things? Actually, the magic of Tumblr is that it's not a blogging platform. It's not? It's a social network. Mm. And that's because of the, I favorite something, I'm following people. Yeah. It's almost like a more robust Twitter in that way. It's sort of Correct. Twitter with embedded images and videos. It's, and It's what you can't say in 140 characters. Ah. And I, and I actually think, you know, people make the mistake of comparison, comparison, of comparing, excuse me, Tumblr to WordPress and some of the other right. blogging platforms. I think the businesses are absolutely fundamentally different. Twitter, uh, Tumblr, excuse me, is an engaged network of passionate users that are expressing yeah. themselves creatively. And WordPress is a CMS. It's right. the best CM, you know, yeah. CMS in the business. To it's date, it's yeah. a fantastic company. Right. And you know, our, our friend and colleague Tony Conrad has yeah. led the investment there. Is very active and great investment. I, fantastic, hugely successful, but, but it's different. Something very different than Tumblr. There's no social there. Exactly. I mean, the comments, but that's. I mean, I live in my Tumblr dashboard. Yeah. I, I, I live in my Tumblr dashboard as much as I live in my Twitter stream, you know? And Incredible. It's, yeah. I find it, it's a different, it's a different type of content. It's, it's, I, it's creative. I get so much music from Tumblr, incredible photography. Yeah. Again, back to the curating a very passionate, deliberate audience early community, exactly. they, they had content creators in there. So you have all these kind of really interesting uh, blogs on there, why you're fat, why this, da da da. Exactly. It seems very expressive. Uh, and now Sequoia put $35 million in or whatever, and it's over a $100 million valuation. What do you think of some of these larger rounds and these sort of big bets? I mean, when you put that much money in at a over a $100 million valuation, now Sequoia wants us to get to become a multi billion dollar company. Yeah, it means you're going for it. Yeah. And I think that's great. Isn't that what this is all about? It is. Uh, when does an entrepreneur know that they can? That they should do one of those mega rounds? I mean, there's a lot of people who raise the AB rounds, and now they're looking. Hey, the market's hot. But well, when, it, when is it a good idea? When is it a bad idea? Well, I think it's a good idea when, first off, somebody's willing to give it to you. Well, that's and a that's, prerequisite. That's uh, that's not an easy thing to accomplish. So I think you know you got to give a lot of credit to folks that are able to build businesses that attract that kind of interest. Okay, so let's ask that question. So that's then. one. What, what does the VC what, what does the VC need to see in order to put down a big check like that at a big valuation? See, I think you need to see real hyper growth. You know, you need to see that hockey stick, and yeah. you need to have faith that there is um, a real business behind that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure that the business has to be fully developed at that point, but you right. have to believe that there uh, there's enough value created in the community that's growing at a at a at a at a hyper rate right. to to make a bet that you could build a billion dollar business. And speaking of that, you did exactly that with Twitter. I don't know if it was two or three years ago, you guys. Put yeah. down $10 million uh, or so at a $100 million valuation. A little less than that. A little less, but everybody said, oh my God, these guys are idiots. They're gonna what, this is the most ridiculous valuation ever. And now it's whatever, two or three years later, four or five billion dollar valuation well, from what people are saying you know, on Twitter. You guys did 40 or 50x. You know what's interesting about that is, um, you know, and it, it comes back to the question you asked me earlier about what makes Spark different. Yeah. Um, you know, my partner Bijan was using the product. And I, I was, I was, I was joining the firm right it as was, we were yeah. right as we were investing in the company, um, and I started using the product as well. And we all started, you know, and and um, um, I, I remember the summer like very very clearly. And before we made the investment, we we're all using the product, and he was using the product early. And you know, 
we are users of web services. Like, right. we're just fine. You'll go to any social product on the web, go anywhere, we're there, we're active, we're engaged. And I, I think there's no better way to understand right. um, a service on the web, a social service on the web, short of getting, know, value. getting into it. Yeah, if you get, just if get involved. If you get you that know? value out of it, it's easy. And I, and I think to Bijan's credit, he was there early, he got the value out of it, he, he, he recognized the talent there, he stayed close to those guys since yeah. missing the A round, frankly. Right. And, um, you know, we're able to get in and at that point you know I think when you believe in something strongly and you're seeing the growth and they were growing you know it was three, yeah. two three million but people said it would never make any money true but it was two three million users at the time was starting to grow and, and we, we had real conviction he had real conviction and we all did and I, I think that that's um you know I think I think being users of these products really differentiates us from a lot of the other folks in this business I want to tell you I want you to tell me what that meeting was like at the partners when you had to just when you guys were discussing justifying the large uh, valuation. But before we do that, I you want wanna, to tell yeah. you about an incredible product, MailChimp. MailChimp. Uh, you know MailChimp because GDGT started sending out a newsletter. Absolutely. And it's been a huge success for them. My, su my suggestion. I yeah. hooked them up with the MailChimp guys. I gave them a free account. And now Inhabitat is using it as well, which is another great blog, which Peter Rojas' wife exactly. does. And man, has it really added character to the GDGT product. Yeah. Uh, Peter Rojas and Ryan, great bloggers, and now they're writing their opinions and Everybody's responding, and you can just see those yeah. threads are incredible. I mean, they're really starting to fall. You know, the site, as you know, is uh, they're coming out with, a, with an amazing new the product. The next version's incredible. Yeah, this, we can't really talk this about month, this. Not, yeah, but it, it's all about that engaged right. community. And I mean, we've uh, seen three rounds of mock-ups of it, and it just goes from like here to here to here. Yeah, it's, it's just great. incredible. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's a nice board to be on because we have. It's a good uh, crew. Yeah, we got a bunch of pro you and I are very much product guys. Yep. And you got some business guys. And actually Tony's a product guy. Yep. It's a really product driven. We're company. actually all business guys and product guys. You yeah. Know? So it's 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 great. Some boards I'm on, it's all business talk and it's no product talk. Boring. This one is all product <laughs> talk. Uh, and uh, hey, that product is being enabled by MailChimp. A thousand subscribers uh, on your if you have under a thousand subscribers, it's absolutely free uh, and it's very reasonable after that. And boy, there's nothing as powerful as email when you send it. People get it and then they click on all the links, they go back to your site. MailChimp has announced a $1 million integration fund. Basically, they've created their own Y Combinator. If you uh, go to MailChimp right now, you can pitch them on an idea, and they will give you money to build something that hits their API. These guys obviously have a million bucks to give away. They're doing tremendous business right now. This is a, this is a business I tried to invest in. Yeah. If you want to invest in a killer business. The email business is an interesting business, actually. These guys are making crazy money. Yep. You have to see this product, MailChimp. I, I begged the guy, Ben, to let me invest, and he says, we don't need any money. Yeah. And I said, but I can bring a lot of value, maybe I'll join the board. He goes, we don't have a board. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what do I gotta do? I gotta go to Atlanta. I'm gonna go to Atlanta and meet these guys, because I literally, I'm telling you right now, whatever their next, whatever their next valuation, I don't care, I'm gonna be valuation incentive. You're, you're blank checking them. I'm blank checking them. I'm putting, <laughs> I'm putting, I'll put two cranberries on it. All right. Two cranberry chips from the Bellagio, that's 50 Gs. Uh, anyway, I love MailChimp and you love MailChimp. Everybody loves MailChimp. <laughs> Go ahead and thank at MailChimp on your Twitter account and just sign up and say, I just signed up for at MailChimp thanks to uh, this week in startups, they may try and hire you full time after that plug. <laughs> I can't tell you how I many. Mean, I'm gonna, I want to put you I in a the, monkey suit and parade <laughs> you around town as I am such a monkey boy. As the boy. Mailchimp. I'll tell you why. Because I was using this serve <laughs> on the Jason Nation email that I did. I, I renamed it Launch, and I put it on ma uh, Mailchimp, and now just all of this nightmares I used to have every day about do email you, and do you delivery. Think they sat around and they were thinking, Mailchimp, Mail Ape, Mailchimp, Mail Ape. Do you think that happened? It's like orangutan. Chimpanzee. How many iterations of monkey do you think they went through? They Male went through monkey. A lot, a lot. And I, I have to tell you, the product is just so well. <laughs> talking about product guy to product guy, and Peter loves it, and Ryan, they love it. Yep. Uh, really incredible. Thanks to them. So you go into this meeting. Or so, uh, Bijan comes so in. So actually, set, you have I wasn't. With the at, I actually wasn't. Oh, at he that joined meeting. after. I, no, I, I was. Uh, I was just joining. Actually, they let me take the summer off. <laughs> ah. So I didn't. I think I. I Wait really a second. Didn't. VCs always take the summer. No, off. are you kidding me? Come Dude, on. That's such a. That's such a myth. Wait a second. When I've did you leave for harder. vacation in December? I've in December. I yeah, left like before you the left. Twenty fifth. You went, Christmas. You Christmas 24th. You left, and then you came back January. January second. Really? Are you kidding me? Most VCs, I took one week off. Here's where mo most VCs go away December 5th. No, seriously, December 15th, they go away. Well, I don't know how and most And they come VCs back January do. 8th. Let me tell you, that's not how we do it at Spark Capital. Okay. That's we're not the how working, we do it. We're the blue collar VC. Right. We're, are, always, we're always on. Are you guys price insensitive? I mean, that's sort of no, like the vibe on the street. It's like, hey, these guys will, we're pay, will we'll, pay the price. We're value, we're value insensitive, meaning, or value sensitive, I should yeah. say, meaning, 
we're comfortable paying for value. Uh -huh. We're not, um, I think we are, I, I think we are as frugal and, uh, I mean, we're definitely frugal as a firm. Yeah. And I think that we are definitely value conscious, but I think we are comfortable paying for real value creation. Um, if you look at Twitter investment, if you had invested at 100 million, 50 million, or 200 million dollar valuation, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because you still own over 10% of the business. It's worth four or five billion dollars now. The difference between 10 and what 500 yeah. million dollars? That, does that it doesn't matter? An investment like that returns the but entire. But still, fund. at the time, yeah, at, by in, in spades. But at the time, you know, you you have to ask yourself: Is this a fair price for the asset? And you go through everything. And I, you know, to, I remember the argument at the time because I was in some of the meetings around that. I remember yeah. talking about the investment. What do you got? What do you? They they, they called me and like, what do you think? And blah blah yeah. blah, and. The one thing that kept coming up over and over again, which I think is really instructive, is like, this is one of those few assets that is slowly starting to and really has the chance to become a verb. You know, to tweet. Oh yeah, to tweet. And we were, we were really talking about the language and the lexicon around Twitter, yeah. at, in addition to using the product and mm. seeing the value yeah. in it, that's saying like, we, we believe we're tapping into something that can really, you know, enter the, 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 the cultural zeitgeist here. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, be a top ten site. Exactly, and that was really you know once we realized that people were starting to talk to to use tweet as a verb, yeah. it kind of put us over the hump a little bit and right. said we think there's something really powerful here. And at that point, surveys said 10, 15 percent of people knew what it is, and today people 60, 70 percent know what Twitter yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. It's an interesting survey I saw. Almost as many as many people know Twitter as know Facebook, even though the products have a different user base. Well, you know what's it's funny. It's like I was actually it seems at, like I was at Facebook yeah. yesterday talking to a, a friend of mine who, who recently joined, and um, um, you know we're just rapping back and forth on Facebook and Twitter and yeah. yada yada yada. And um, you know Twitter is it is very different than Facebook in that I think it really is like it's really a media platform distribution yeah. platform. And I think it will ultimately end up, my, my bet is that it'll be like the largest media outlet platform distribution mechanism in, on the planet. Um, it's interesting you say that because I was in a situation where I wanted to find out what the Knicks score was because I was out of the office, whatever. I'm going to the game Sunday. I just got tickets. I'm going to Sunday. Nice. I'm going to be in the Comerica box. You're in a box? I'll be on the floor. F you. Who are you going with? Can I went to see a buddy of mine, uh, an entrepreneur, this morning, and I was actually literally flying out of here. I was supposed to fly. I, hate you. I was supposed to leave Sunday morning. So and he's like, Sunday "You want to go morning. to the next day?" He's like, "I got floor seats." I'm like, "I literally called up. I changed my flight Kill to the red yourself. eye. Oh, I'm, I'm ready to go." God. And I got invited to the Comer. Now I get to say floor seats watching the Lakers. Oh, it's crazy. Nobody ever comes on the show and drops a little hip hop like no, that. Do they? No, 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 no. See. No. Um, so wait a second. What the? I can't even remember. See, what yeah, we're you talking lost your train. I totally. You no, because I'm so infuriated right now. You're saying that you needed to get the Knicks score. Oh, so I need to get. By the Knicks way, score. I'm, of course I'm a Knicks fan. Of course, I'm diehard. Okay, uh, I'm not like the literally, my poor wife. My wife is like, "Why are you so happy?" I'm like, "The Knicks are, you know, twenty and fourteen or whatever, nineteen and fourteen. She's and like, playing great ball. Oh, unbelievable! With like, hard, I haven't seen defense, this fans. I haven't seen this. Patrick Ewing, Charles Oakley, yeah, and Anthony yeah, yeah, Mason. Yeah, no, no, no. Were and this, I mean, unbelievable. Amare is. The best player in the league, hands down, right well, now. Well, that's a little aggressive, but oh, that's well, he's playing at the highest level. He's right playing now. at the highest level, but to call him the best player in the okay, league. Okay, so whatever. Maybe he doesn't have the rings of everybody else, but I would top say top five, top seven, top eight for sure. He's definitely yes, but he's not LeBron. in terms of who's playing the best he's right now. Who's yeah, playing the best? He's right on now. fire. Pretty clear, he is, uh, and he's the MVP of the league. If you were going to vote today, <laughs> um, now. Uh, not afraid to take a stance, ladies and I gentlemen. Not, Jason I am not, Calcanis. especially after the <laughs> last ten years of suffering. I mean, it has been brutal. My yeah. wife is like. I don't understand. We've been watching all these Knicks games. All they do is lose. How, how come all of a sudden they're winning? Yeah, I gotta, I'm embarrassed to say this, and I know we're on camera right yeah. now, but I'm, an, I'm a fairly honest, straightforward guy, yeah. so I'm just going to tell you like it is. I haven't been able to watch the Knicks for years. Really? And I it gotta, is brutal. I, have to, I, I, have I, my, I don't blame you. One of my best buddies worked for Cablevision for years, and his father was like, ran Madison Square Garden. Another buddy of mine runs business development Madison Square Garden. It makes for sense. For years, he's like, you should come to the games. I was just like, ah. No, I mean, to, I what, to watch them not play defense. Me. They, yeah. they don't get back on defense. They no, don't box terrible. out. Like, terrible. no fundamentals. Or blaming each other. No fundamentals. Come on. This, you, you need a blue collar team. Uh, in New York. You need a blue collar team just like you need a blue collar venture Absolutely. capitalist. Absolutely. Uh, and so n I go to my list. I have a list of every Nick player. Okay. Past and present and my top five Nick people like Alan Hahn from Newsday and Frank from Daily News, whatever. And I basically now, instead of doing a Google news search for the Knicks, 
I just go to my Twitter list. 13 of 15 Knicks players are on Twitter. Oh, yeah. They all tweet before and after the game. Yep. And I trade tweets with them. That's how awesome it is. Isn't that amazing? It, it's, it's mind blowing. But that's the, Five that, years by the ago. Way, that is, that's why it is the ultimate media broadcast and democratization platform because it's crazy. it allows the, the author of content, whoever they are, professional or amateur, to connect directly with the consumer it's of crazy. content. And, and it turns the consumer into the author and the author into the consumer. And it's like this unbelievable platform. I was tweeting with Stefan Marbury Love a that. couple of years ago. Starberry. Starberry. And uh, he. I said, uh, you know, hey, we should talk about your doing, using Ustream. So I tweeted him my phone number. Calls me. Boom. I'm on the phone with Stefan Marbury. I was Love like, when that. you're in L.A., come by the studio. I'll show you the studio. Whatever. He's now in China now. Um, okay. We'll take a question from, uh, let's do an Ask Jason. Ask Jason time. This is a segment. We're we went a little over. Now. You okay? Yeah. Most okay. You sure? Yeah. What time is it? It's what time is it? Five twenty-seven. I'll be fine. Sure. We have more time to go. Yeah, we'll go ten more minutes. Okay. Definitely okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. We're having uh, fun though. We're having yeah. fun. It's moving fast. Uh, I feel bad for the person who has to transcribe this episode. Matthew, <laughs> uh, you're on the line. Matthew, are you there? Hey, Jason. How are you? Okay. And you're calling from the nine oh seven, which I do not recognize. Where are you calling from? Nine oh seven is Anchorage, Alaska. I was wow. about to say where. So wait a second. Are you telling me that you were represented by Sarah Palin? Uh, I'm not. No, I'm not a uh, native of Alaska. I'm ah. actually from Montana. Oh, wow. So you went from Montana even deeper into the woods, into a Anchorage, you Alaska. You found Montana wow. to be a little too urban for you. A little too urban. So now, and I can see the trees behind you. Wow, it looks beautiful. <laughs> uh, so you have a question for us. Let's hear it. I do. Um, so I've been watching uh, This Week in Startups, and there's always a lot of discussion essentially on how to find co-founders. And so I've taken some of that advice, you know, going to meetup.com, looking at founder forums, going to college universities and scouting around. And I just really haven't had much luck. And I also think due to my location up here in Alaska yeah. uh, and profession, which is the military, which means I'm constantly on the move and go, that that kind of adds to it. Um, but I'm still interested in pursuing my idea for a startup. So as such, I've kind of resorted to cold calling, cold emailing, cold tweeting people to see if they have uh, any interest. So I guess uh, my question is kind of twofold. What is your advice hmm. on this cold calling approach? You know, is there a standard way to go about essentially cold calling people and convincing them to be a technical co-founder? And then the second part of my question is, you know, being in the military or any other profession that involves a lot of travel. Uh, you know, it really isn't ideal to pursuing a web startup. So what are some ways to kind of jumpstart your idea when you're not capable of being in an interconnected and diverse area like Silicon Valley? Yeah. So one of the reasons you're having a hard time finding a founder is because of where you're located. It would be much easier if you were in the valley, you would find a founder much quicker. Uh, but you're on the road, you're in the military, which I appreciate um, uh, the, the sacrifice you guys make. Uh, and we actually have a lot of military guys who watch the show. Uh, how long do you have left in the military, I guess? Like, is this a lifelong thing? Are you gonna, can you get stationed in San Francisco? I mean. Um, well, I used to be enlisted in the military. Yeah. They did, gave, gave me a scholarship, so I'm going yeah. to school on, ah, the tax, yes. on the taxpayer dollar. Well, that's good. So I, actually, I have uh, four, four years left as an officer. I'm yeah. looking into trying to get into the Guard and Reserve and get stationed yeah. down in San Francisco yeah. or somewhere in California. But until that time, yeah. you know, I'm kind of. I think to doing where we have. when you when you've only got a limited amount of time, if you can do a business that is um, does one thing particularly well that you're passionate about, and make what um, I call a dude business, but not in a derogatory way. way. It's dude in a website, or it could be two dudes in a website, and there's a lot of those businesses that make a million dollars a year, and it's a real deal, you know. And then those businesses can grow into something. So right now, I would look at this as an entrepreneur as your time to learn. Learn how to work with a technical founder. Learn the heuristics of building a site, marketing, social stuff, all the stuff you learn about on This Week in Startups. Um, and Hacker News, great place to interact with people. And build your credibility by having a blog and having a Twitter account named properly and discuss the topics related to the site you want to build. So if you want to build something uh, that's in, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, what's the Kiva stuff? Like, uh, what do they call it? Microfinance. Yeah. If you wanted to build a microfinance, Startup. I would start a site called Microfinance Today or Microfinance Fan or whatever or you know uh, whatever uh, small change and 
become part of the community That's by good. just discussing the topic, and then people will gravitate to you. And then you can say, listen, I have an idea. I'm looking for somebody to help me build something very small, limited scope, eight-week project. Mo, what do you think? Well, I was going to say, um, so a couple things. I think, I think the point of uh, kind of, I guess you could limit it. You don't have that. Whether you limit it or not is, is sort of one thing. I, I think what you need to do is do something that you're passionate about, that of you always. really, really believe in, and that you that you feel like you you can add value to, and that you have some level of expertise in, and if you, and you're or you're going to get that expertise. But yeah. you, you got to focus on something that that you care about, and that is why, why, bite sizable because it's. I, do, I just don't think entrepreneurship can be like manufactured. I, right. I feel like it has to be authentic. Mm. Um, so, and, and I think I say that also because I think that's what'll help you recruit yeah. a technical co-founder. Passion is contagious. Exactly, and also you have something to architect around. So, mm. what I would say is when you're going out to look for somebody to partner with, you know, if you know what you're going to do yourself and you're really, really passionate about, you yep. can get into those communities. You can find other people that are like-minded that are in those communities. And what you want, want to find is somebody that's technical, that shares that passion that you do for mm. what you're working on or what you're thinking about or the problem you're trying to solve. Yeah. And, and you know, target people that way yep. as opposed to just somebody who's technical. You know, you're in Alaska. This thing will probably have to start virtual. And I think yeah. that's fine to start. I mean, you yep. know, you're, you can do it. There's a lot of technology today to, to make that work. We, no problem. We, We've been involved with companies that, sure. that 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 do that, and so I'd say, look, maybe at some point you have to figure it out and move to the valley, or move to New York, or move to wherever. Um, but you know, to start, pick something you're passionate about and focus on trying to find other people that are technical yeah. and also passionate about the same thing through the communities that that you know that, exist, that already. exist already around yeah. that thing that you're interested in or that problem you're trying to solve. Yeah. And I think that that'll probably be your best bet because. Um, you know, just going blank for oh, this guy's technical or this guy can mm. you know uh, he can do he can do whatever Objective C. Yeah, it doesn't mean that he's going to have the connect passion. with you and have the passion for the idea. And when things go badly uh, and when it's challenging, Matthew, you need people who are passionate about what they do. And you know this better than anybody being in the military. You know, if you're not passionate about it, you're going to fail. It's not going to work like, out very well. It's the same with marketing. You know, yeah. like when when you want to market a site, mm. you, you you know, and when you, we really want to do the grassroots marketing, you, you look for those passionate communities that already mm. exist. Sure. Where the people, you know, whether it's like you're a mom site and you go to the mommy blogs, or you know, of course, pick your poison. Yeah, comic um, book blogs, exactly, whatever. whatever it is. Like, I think it's similar with finding a te technical co-founder. You almost want to you you want to look for those people within the the sphere of influence or the circle that you're playing in and, mm. and see if there's an, an alignment of vision and passion. Tyler, what's your advice for Matthew in Anchorage? Um, I think it's a sort of folly to wait for the technical co-founder to kind of mm. come out of the, you know, wilderness, to use uh, your Alaskan metaphor there. So, yeah. like, you can do a lot, like, get the, you can have the design, the site fully designed. Sure. Wireframed at least, at the very least, wireframed, at the very sure. least, have a great logo, and you know, yeah, go get balsamic or one go of those do as much as you can, or... and it only helps you anyways. Yeah, I have to say, Matthew, that's a really good piece of advice from Tyler. Is try to pick up some skills as you go. The more skills you have, the more valuable you are, uh, and. Uh, Definitely. You know, but I wouldn't discount, I, and I think and it, you should. It also helps you in your negotiation with your co-founder. Well, that, that's how what's sure. So you're bringing more to the table. The more you bring to the table, right. the better opportunity you'll have to find this person. Yeah. So you know, identifying something you're really passionate about, looking in communities where those people exist, bringing already stuff to the table. You're like, yeah. look what I've done already. Let me yeah. show you where this is going. Right. That works. It, yeah, again, I'm 37% of the it's way there. It's self-marketing. Yeah. But, but what, you, you don't, what you still need, and I think is important, is like, you don't want to outsource the development of it. I mean, if you, no. if you can... If you it can, never works. It never, yeah. it, I mean, it does very rarely, and very you rare. really want to find somebody to partner with. So You're not going to make something cr incredibly innovative. It's hard. It, man. It's waiting just, for the peak guys from India to get back. No offense it, to India, but I see these people try startups, I, and they, it's just too they outsource hard. everything. Not, an, not if you're doing a consumer business. You can start right. that way, but you eventually have to bring it in-house. Uh, Matthew, is any of this helpful at all? Absolutely. Uh, I love the show because there's just so much, you know, impromptu creativity that goes on. So you guys have answered my questions perfectly. I appreciate it very much. Uh, keep increasing your skill set and do not be intimidated by any of this stuff. Like when I started my magazine back in the 90s, I had never been a writer before. I had never been a designer. I got PageMaker and Quirk Express. I learned how to lay out a page. People told me I need to hire a photographer. I bought myself a Carl Zeiss lens. I took my own photos. I laid it out myself in Quirk <coughs> Express. And then I uh, found a printer. 
and they said, you gotta do color correction. I said, what's that? He explained it to me and I did it. And, and you buy a book and you make a lot of mistakes, but don't be intimidated. Learn how to do wireframes. Learn how to use Illustrator. Learn how to use Photoshop. It's not difficult. All the videos are online to learn it. You, you don't seem like you sleep much. You're up there, it's gotta be three in the morning or something, looks like. Whatever, just stay up all night and do it, right? That's yes, it. sir. The job's gotta get done. Sir, yes, sir. And thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks. You know, thank you for for uh, you def spend any w defending our country. Yeah. You spend any time over there? Um, I have not. Huh. I've been lucky to be a uh, meteorologist for the Air Force, so they don't send me uh, over to the the hot and humid places. Wait a second. Are you saying you're the Air Force's weatherman? I used to be a meteorologist for the Air Force. Yes, so that's sir. to make sure the planes don't fly through any uh, conditions, or to, to what to do in the conditions. Um, a little bit of both. Tell the planes, you know, exactly what the weather patterns are here and there. Uh, what kind of weather you're going to expect at your destinations. What wow. kind of weather you're going to expect when you're dropping bombs here and there. That's so, a, that's important stuff. It's a very important job. And how about those French who didn't let us fly over France back in the day when we needed to bomb, and that would, they're more than happy to have us defend them. But when we needed to go in there, and who are we going after? I Is that this, Lebanon? We're about to go down a serious rabbit hole I think it was, here. wasn't it Lebanon <laughs> yeah. that they wouldn't let us fly over? Or was it Iraq at the time they wouldn't let us fly over? We lost two pilots. Yeah, I know. Because we had to fly around France. I'll never forgive France for that. I mean, I love pa Pano Chocolat. But, but croissants. The Pano Chocolat's great. I mean, but really. let me tell you something. The French? Cowards. <laughs> Not that I have an opinion on it, but... Uh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Jason Calcanis. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, if we have to go bomb something, we're, hey, you know if the French... If God. only my dad was here, he would be so proud are you of me right now. No, no, are you kidding me? Let me tell you something about the French. <laughs> it, let me tell you something about the French. If it went down, <laughs> if it went down again, like it did the last time with Hitler, you know who they call? They call us. But all of a sudden, oh, we can't fly over your airspace because we don't know if we exactly <laughs> agree. And when they say exactly agree, they mean we haven't negotiated contracts to replace the nuclear reactors and the other stuff in whatever you're going to go blow up there. Yeah. I'm, I'm I think it was hard. It was Beirut. Was it Beirut? Yeah. Uh, he, you know, and they were all in bed with Saddam Hussein and everything with him. Anyway, Matthew, as a total aside, uh, I really appreciate what you're doing for the country. All of us do. Uh, it's an incredible sacrifice. Even if you're not over there, I know it's really hard work. Uh, and good luck as an entrepreneur. And you know, keep tuning in. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, I always take I, care. I always love the military guys. I think military guys make great entrepreneurs. I agree. They make great. They get disciplined. Disciplined. They under. They understand the concept of hard work, and they're 100%. not afraid. They have like a there's a certain humility to, to the military guys. They know hard work. They're not afraid of it. They're like, I'll dig a ditch, or I'll do the weather for the pilots and make sure they don't hit stuff. I'll 100%. clean the plane. I'll do whatever it takes. Hundred percent. That's what entrepreneurship is about, right? I mean, at the end of the day. Yep. Uh, so, uh, a couple of final questions, uh, and Tyler, if you have one, of course, you can, you can go for it. Um, what do you think is going on with the economy right now? A lot of people are looking at this $50 billion Facebook thing that just occurred. Uh, LinkedIn's obviously going to IPO. Uh, eHarmony, Gamefly. And we're going to have IPO craziness in 2011. All great companies, all with real revenue. Uh, but are we in a bubble, a half a bubble, multiple bubbles? What, what's going so on are, in your you're, you're not asking about the broader macro economy. You're asking about the startup economy. I'm asking the we internet the economy. Internet startup economy, okay. right? Because we know that there's other screwed up stuff going on yeah, in the Yeah, that's a much world. bigger topic. Yeah, that's a whole um, show. But just for, for, for entrepreneurs. I think, um, I do think that um, things are a little overheated uh, because there are, you know, there's two things going on. You know, there's there's all there's a shortage of great companies. You know, it's hard mm. to 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 build really great businesses. It's right. just it's tough. I mean, a lot of VCs. You, you need a lot of luck. So one so that I'll get to that. But yeah. so one side is um, is just how tough it is to build really big sustainable growth companies uh, that can be you know multi billion dollar franchises. Mm. And so I think on the on the later stage side of things, you definitely have capital paying up big dollars to be a part of that. Um, you know, we'll see how that shakes out. I think in many instances that money will return quite well. Like I, I think the Goldman Facebook thing is uh, you know, a very smart move on their behalf. I think they'll make money on Facebook. Right. And I think they'll get the IPO and I think they'll you know, they're building a, a an ongoing banking relationship with sure. one of the smart great move on their part. I, what about the people buying at fifty billion? You know, I'd buy. You would. Yeah. A little overpriced, but you think 
You know, how I, how many Facebooks could there be in the world in the history of the internet? I, there are. I think there's only going to be one Facebook. Right, and that's um, going to be worth two or three hundred billion dollars. I would think so, at, at least at its height. So yeah. the question is, are you giving up one turn on that money by paying? Yeah, maybe, probably, right. definitely. So twenty five billion is the right valuation. No, I don't know what the right valuation is. I think twenty. Is. I think you do. But, I think if you so were maybe gonna, you're given a turn on the money, but your personal money you put in at fifty billion, or you put it in twenty five billion. I'd put it in at both, but I'd sooner yes. take 25. Of course. But so you even still, even at that level, so you put I, your own personal money in. Okay. Yeah, so I, look, I think, I think it's definitely a bit overheated, and I, I think it becomes even more important to pick your horses. Mm. Pick them carefully. Right. Um, on the earlier stage side, I think obviously there's been a lot of noise as well, and I think there's Tons been a, of angel a lot of capital flooding the market. And yeah. I think VCs are going earlier, and angels are in the market. So and, many new angels. Partially you know, my fault with the open angel fraud. Well, <laughs> Yeah, I think and angel um, list. I mean, both look, of think, us are making it so democratized. I think it's very well intentioned, and yeah. I'm so so glad that we have such a robust angel community. It's great for the startup it's community. It's unbelievable. It's amazing. I mean, think about where we were ten years ago and where we are. No today. angels. It's, it's incredible. We're like five people. So now but, there's five hundred. But there is going to be a shakeout. I think there's going to be even more of a shakeout at that um, stage. At that level, we're, we're talking smaller dollars, sure. but but I think there's going to be a lot of carnage of companies that just can't raise the institutional venture funding, right? And are not going to be able to either get profitable quickly or or get the capital they need to grow. And I I think um, I think there will be a retrenchment in that market. I think that's interesting you say that about angel investing because I tell the people who I'm angel investing in. I don't think that if I if I'm not going to do it, I say I think the, one of the most common reasons I give them is I don't think that this becomes a 25, 50 million, 100 million dollar business, which means I don't think that the angels the, that you're going to be able to go from angel to venture capital. The VCs won't see. Which the, is a big problem. Which is a big problem. You run like, out of money. You run out of money. Then you're and, a dude uh, business. Exactly. Well, may, if you're lucky. If you're lucky, or you're, you're a dude you're business. No business. And you go sideways. And so if you invested at two or three million dollar valuation, it's not like angel from, investing is not an asset class. Like you have to no. remember that it's you cannot get enough diversification to diversify. Away way, you know. Maybe uh, if you invest at 50. The risk. 40, 50. Maybe. If you're Maybe. Ron Conway, you yes. can do it. Yes. But very few people are yeah. Ron Conway. Chris Sock, uh, Dave McClure. I don't even th think Chris or Dave, well, maybe, but they, I don't. They'll get there. They'll get there. They're Maybe. doing 25 a year. Maybe. If you spray and pray. Maybe. As they say. It's not our approach at Spark, you know. No. Um, you place bigger bets on things that are more well, secure. And we'll place sm small bets. Like, I, I just did a, a seed deal in a company I'm super excited about called Supply. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is, um, I mean, it's in the larger sh social shopping category, but it's really a, a place for people to, to find and share and buy products that they love. So it's like, it's, it's like a mall built by people entirely mm. from the ground up. So every product is added by, by people. Everything's curated by the community. You can follow people whose taste you like. You can follow stores that are effectively, mm. the stores are built by the products people add to them, not by the store owners themselves. So it's wow. really, it's pretty cool. It's like, tum actually, it's, it's kind of like Tumblr, well, for sure, but for products. Social network for shopping. It's interesting. And, yeah. and, and it's, a it's, lot of people have tried it in A this lot space. of people have tried it before. I think these guys have a little bit of that magic. Um, mm. Actually, you know, the chairman and one of the co-founders is Zach Klein, who's the founder yeah. of Vimeo. Um, oh, he's great. Yeah, he's fantastic. And mm. so... That angel round closed? Yeah. <laughs> oh, 52 minutes in, F word. Uh, I dropped the F bomb. F bomb. Um, yeah, I got to take it out because I don't want to get the iTunes stamp. Yeah, Steve Jobs will make sure nobody can ever download this podcast again. I know. He's Anyhow, gangster. What I know. So, but what I was going to say is that. Look um, at the emails. You know, that's a Maybe we open that back up. That's a, that's a, that's I a, need to make some room for takeout. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a company. Now that I know Sparks in. Well, no, where we did a, a seed yeah. investment mm -hmm. and, you know, it was not, not a ton of money, yeah. but. But we believe in the product. We believe in the team. Yeah, we're you believe in, in the we're, entrepreneur. We're engaged, you yeah. know, at a board level. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're um, um, you know we we're not we're treating it like we would any other investment. It's just a seed investment for us. So yeah. um, you know, I think that that's more our style. Uh, Mo, thank you for being on the program. It's my pleasure. I really appreciate you being so honest uh, and giving with your advice and information. Uh, and I also appreciate Mailchimp and GoToMeeting for sponsoring the show. Go ahead and thank them on your Twitter account uh, at Mailchimp and at GoToMeeting. Tell them you heard about us, uh, heard about them on this week in startups. And we're going to give some uh, this week in startup messenger bags. I don't have one here, but they'll show it on the screen right now. Uh, the beautiful This Week in Startups messenger bags. We're going to give out a bunch of those uh, every week if you tweet. And the more times you tweet, the more times you get entered into the um, get entered into the contest. See everybody at the launch conference on February 23rd and 24th. If you have a question, you can be on Ask Jason by emailing askjason at thisweekin.com. Uh, make sure immediately following this program that you sign up for a Tumblr account. Uh, make sure you sign up for a... Uh, 
a uh, supply account. Is it SV? Yeah. S-V-P-P-L-Y. Go to gdgt.com. Sign up for that. OMG Pop. That's a cool one you guys yep. did. AdKeeper. Scott Kernitz. Tumblr. My God. It's, it's just an incredible list. AdMail. Adapt TV. you got a lot of good stuff in that portfolio. Yeah. You guys Same are going to do so well. Um, really appreciate you being on the program. Tyler, Pleasure. thank you for being on the program. Except a zero insight. The big donut. Zero point zero insights <laughs> today. None? Tell them what they've won, Ed. <laughs> it's an insightless show for Tyler. Uh, it's okay. Every, he needs a day off. Every he does need a day off. Uh, we'll see it's you still all. Still a little bit of the holiday season. <laughs> it is. He's, he's getting through it. We'll see you all next time on This Week in Startups. That's what it's all about, man. They said, money is the root of all evil. But funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you.